Um, welcome, bienvenidos to today's core coffee chat about using and contributing to the Promising Practices database on DataShare. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or CORE Investments along with Nicole Young, and we're your hosts today. And we're also joined today by Eva Holt and Cindy Wong, who are consultants working with us. Uh, Eva Holt is the person responsible for managing everything about data share, including the day-to-day. -day. And Cindy will explain her role in a moment, is available to help if you need some assistance, adding your own promising practice to the data share uh, database. And our core institute events, as you can hear, are held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation. Today, Stella Lauerman is providing simultaneous interpretation, and Gisela Carrasco is providing consecutive interpretation right now, and she'll also translate any comments and questions in the chat. I'll go ahead and move on to a quick overview of CORE. So as we mentioned earlier, CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. It started as a results-based collective impact funding model that's used primarily by the county and city of Santa Cruz. In the last few years, it's evolved into both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. The evolution of CORE has been fueled by input and insights we've gathered from many partners, local government, philanthropy, nonprofits, and community groups like those represented on today's call. This collaborative process has led to the core mission and vision statement that you see here with equity at the center. When we say equitable health and well-being, we mean that all people across the lifespan have equitable opportunities to experience these eight interdependent core conditions for health and well-being and that people's opportunities and life outcomes aren't predictable for better or for worse by their race, ethnicity, income, gender identity, sexual orientation, immigration status, zip code, or any other social identity. So as both a funding model and a movement, CORE provides a framework for aligning priorities, programs, policies, funding, and results around community-wide goals and it's an opportunity to work together to create these core conditions for health and well-being. Equity is at the center of this diagram to illustrate that we have to examine and address our individual, organizational, and systemic beliefs and practices and structures that perpetuate the inequities we're determined to eliminate. And events like today's core coffee chat are offered as part of the core Institute for innovation and impact. You can think of the core Institute as the learning arm of core investments through the core Institute. We offer an array of training technical assistance and other learning opportunities for people across different sectors to build the knowledge and skills and systems that we need to fulfill our collective vision of an equitable thriving and resilient community. So with that, I will turn it over to Nicole Young to give us an overview of the Promising Practices database on DataShare. Thanks, Nicole. Do you want to go to the next slide? So we'll actually show you a few screenshots of DataShare and um, explain a little bit about what this is, uh, how it's used, uh, what it's for, and some tools that we've created to align with that. And then Nicole will actually do a demo and, and share her screen and show the, the actual um, database for all of you. And so we just want to acknowledge some of you may already be familiar with the Promising Practices database. Um, for others of you, this might be brand new information. So we hope that you'll take from it what is useful for you. And, and actually, our hope is that this leads you to want to explore more on your own, because um, the more you dig into it, uh, the more you discover all the kind of cool tips and tricks and, and ways to find information that's helpful to you. Um, you know, data share itself, um, again, Eva is here as, as the kind of go-to person that uh, manages the overall uh, platform and is really active with um, a steering committee and administrative partners and several organizations in our community to help really 
continuously improve data share as this web-based data platform. Um, many of you might already have seen or noticed that there's a lot in data share, and there are also still some gaps and holes and things that we can do together to continuously uh, build out and make this um, overall platform more useful and relevant to our community. And so one of those areas is the, again, the Promising Praxis database. So what we're showing you here on this slide is just a screenshot of the DataShare homepage, because there's a few different ways to get to the Promising Praxis database. Uh, one is by starting off on the Local Progress tab that's highlighted here. And under that, you see the core results menu. And on, once you get to that page, there's a link to the Promising Praxis database. Uh, so we'll, Nicole will show you that in a moment. If you go to the next slide, you'll see that the whole site itself, you can view in English, and you can also translate it into different languages so that you're seeing all the content uh, in whether it's Spanish or you can see the examples here is French, German. So just know that everything is available in different languages. The next slide, you'll see uh, another way to get to the Promising Praxis database is by going to the Resources tab on the home page. Click on that, and, and, and it brings down another menu where you'll actually see Promising Praxis listed there. And again, on the next slide, you'll see that's also if you select uh, Spanish translation, you can view all of that in Spanish as well. Next slide. And so before we actually dive into the demonstration of Promising Praxis, we wanted to share this tool, which some of you may have seen before, um, may have even used it if you were applying for core funding uh, last year. This is a tool that we call the Core Continuum of Results and Evidence. Um, it's a tool that really is meant to help kind of uh, define what we mean by results, what we mean by evidence, to expand our thinking about what we mean by evidence-based practices, and really think of it as uh, a continuum that helps uh, identify like how much data is available, how much evaluation has been done, what do we know about these programs and practices, how easy is it to find information about different programs and practices, that's publicly available, whether it's through a, a website or a clearinghouse or um, you know, a library. So we've created this tool as part of our work for CORE to really help kind of flush out that thinking and really acknowledge that data exists along a continuum. And there's no good, better, best. It's just more how much there is, <laughs> how well known is it, where can you find it? Um, so it gives us some shared language to talk about evidence-based practices. So there are two ways to get to this tool, this continuum of results and evidence. You can find it on the core results menu on data share, or you can find it and download it from the resources page of the core investments website, which is fairly new. So Gisela has put the links for both of those in the chat. Uh, so we encourage you to download those and take a closer look at them since, um, you're only seeing the fine print here on this slide. If you go to the next slide, you'll see just I have a brief description of what we mean by these different points on the continuum and how we think about the array of, of, of data and evidence uh, ranging from emerging, meaning it's a program practice that really hasn't been evaluated yet, but there's been some positive anecdotal feedback that gives you a sense of oh, this is something worth doing more of and maybe getting a little bit more um, structured or, or formal in your data collection and evaluation. Um, that might lead to, or the next step might be something that we would consider a good idea where there's some kind of informal evaluation, maybe just mostly counting how many people participated or how many times a service was provided. Uh, so that's what we would call descriptive data or descriptive evaluation data. Um, and that the results just tell you that, okay, there's some early signs of progress, early signs that something about it works well, but again, not necessarily measuring outcomes or something that tells you what is the impact or effect of that uh, program or practice. To get there, you would need a more formal evaluation where you have some 
outcomes that you're measuring through different tools, whether it's surveys or, you know, maybe something more qualitative like focus groups. But the, the idea here is that the, here you're getting more formal and structured with your evaluation and that there's at least one positive outcome that you can demonstrate um, through the program. So that's what we would consider effective. And then evidence-based are um, the ones that we often hear about or think about in terms of those have been researched using a more rigorous scientific method. Um, not only are there positive outcomes, but there's some statistical significance, meaning the results say that this didn't just happen by chance or by luck, that there is actually something um, about the program or practice that leads to those positive outcomes. So that's in general how we think about the points on the core continuum. If you go to the next slide, you'll see, and we actually did a little bit of a um, kind of realignment of the core continuum uh, last year so that it's, so that our names, our categories, our definitions uh, lined up more closely with the definitions in the Promising Practices database on data share. So if you look at those darker blue boxes that say ranking, you'll see good idea, effective practice, evidence-based practice with those same brief definitions that I just showed on the core continuum. There's also a category in the Promising Practice database uh, where programs and practices can be marked as local, meaning it's a program practice that has been submitted by a local partner using the platform. Um, and it means that it only appears in our community's version of this data platform. Um, so there are a number, you'll see in a moment, there are a number of practices that have been marked as local that only appear on data share Santa Cruz County. So if you were to go to another community's data platform where they're, where they're using the same uh, web-based platform that the Healthy Communities Institute provides, you wouldn't see that program uh, listed in their version of the Promise and Practice database. So what it means is, and I'll just say that those programs and practices that are marked as local, they may or may not also be categorized or ranked as a good idea, effective practice, or evidence-based practice. So you might see some that are both marked as local and an effective practice, or local and a good idea. I don't think there are any that are just local without any, <laughs> any kind of ranking behind them. Um, but what it means is it gives us that flexibility and that option to submit um, programs and practices that we'd like to see listed on our community's version of the database uh, as a way to make it known what's available and, as, you know, especially in our community. And so that some of those might line up with what we define as emerging practices on that previous slide. Uh, some of them, uh, again, might be actually, you know, match that criteria or that definition of a good idea, effective practice or evidence-based. So that is, I think, all we wanted to say in terms of context. And then I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to do a little demo for us. Oh, actually, you know what? Nicole, I forgot about the poll. I'm going to put the slide back up and then I'll launch the poll. OK. So before we, before we move on, we just want to get a sense, based on what you just heard me describe, and when you, when you think about the programs that you work on, do you think that your programs would be considered a good idea, an effective practice, or an evidence-based practice, or you don't know? And if you work on multiple programs or your organization runs multiple programs, you can uh, select more than one of these answers. So the, the categories that we're showing here are the ones that are actually used by the Promising Practices database. And we'll give it a few more seconds for people to think and answer, and then we'll close the poll and share the results. Okay. Five more seconds, and then I'll close the poll. Three, two, one, here we go. 
Okay, so it looks like we have about half of you that have said that you um, work in a program or work on a program that would be considered an effective practice, and then kind of a, a, a split between good idea and evidence based. So we've got a little bit of everything. Okay, thanks for that. So now I will turn it over to Nicole. Okay, thank you. So let me share my screen again. And this is the promising practices area in DataShare that Nicole showed you how to get to. And again, just to review, that's either through the local progress tab and the core results menu where all of the core tools are or under resources and it's labeled promising practices under the resources tab. If you click on that, it'll get you to this page. And as Nicole mentioned, this is um, a place where it might look a little different depending on what community you're in. So because Healthy Communities Institute or HCI maintains the data share site for us and 150 other communities, or maybe it's more by now, um, including right next door in Monterey County, which we'll check out in just a moment, they do the, the work of trying to populate this database in these different ways. So we'll just do a little bit of exploring, but as Nicole said, we encourage you to take the time to look through this on your own. We have heard, and Eva, let us know if this is no longer the case, but we've heard that we are among the more active contributors to the Promising Practices database here in Santa Cruz County. And we've had help in the past and luckily continue to have help from Cindy Wong, as we've mentioned. We've been sending batches of potential additions to HCI and we'd like to do that again. So if you, as Nicole mentioned, need some help um, doing that, we are happy to help. But you also are welcome to submit the uh, promising practice of your own with this tab, this orange tab that you see here, submit a promising practice. So the database itself, includes examples from all over the country, not internationally yet, and it's searchable. So that's that can be really handy if, for example, you're trying to design a program or you're, you're trying to meet a need in a proposal um, and you're not sure what's out there that might be applicable, whether it's a, a training curriculum or a full-fledged program, or maybe you have a program, but you're looking for ideas on how to evaluate it or how to do more with what you've got. So you can just see what's out there and look, um, look for programs that overlap with yours or meet some of the needs that you have um, uncovered or add to the strengths that you have. So the, that's the good news. The bad news is that because not everybody contributes um, their programs to the database, it's got some pretty significant holes here and there, and it might be a timing issue of just catching up with certain um, issues and conditions and topics. So for example, today um, I was hoping to show you something about um, overdose prevention, Narcan, fentanyl kinds of things, and those aren't really here yet, but I'm guessing we'll see a lot of those in, in the years to come. So um, you can search in various ways. So you can put in a keyword if you know um, roughly what you're looking for, and we'll do that in just a moment. You can search by the, the rankings. And as Nicole mentioned, we, we'd love to get away from the idea of levels or rankings because we really think they imply some judgment that's not really justified. Um, but if you try to think about this, not just as rankings, but as the continuum that Nicole described, you can search by evidence-based practice, effective practice, or good idea, or leave them blank to just have everything show up. Um, you can also see that, that local feature that Nicole mentioned and um, whether something appears in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC's um, community guide that are vetted by a task force that looks at a variety of different interventions and tries to assess how effective they are. So if you only wanted to look at those, you could click this CDC community guide under featured. You could see what's new in this featured section. You can also look at different populations by age, by gender, um, by racial and ethnic minorities to see if there are programs that are particularly um, adapted or, or evaluated in the population of interest. You can look at various subtopics. Um, 
geographic areas, urban or rural, rural or not categorized. And like any of these searches, the more that you can fine tune and narrow them, the, the more of a, um, a match you're likely to get. But it can be really interesting to just scroll through them and just see what is yielded from a broader search. So let's give this a try just so you can see how it looks. And I'll just do a very quick tour of going back to the, this is the Monterey one. Oops, it was here, there it is. And this is just to show you that they do not have local um, options highlighted. So it just varies by community to community, or if they do, we can't see it because we're not in Monterey County. But in our database, we can see the local ones. And you can see here, here's a Santa Cruz one, the Homeless Garden Project is listed here as a local option and several others that have been submitted as well. So let's do a quick search to show you how this might work. Let's say I'm interested in falls prevention for older adults. So I'm gonna try that first and I can just tell you that the word prevention sometimes yields more than you need, but let's try it for that. And now we've got a variety of programs. We've got something from Wisconsin. We've got something from Kansas. We've got some broader ones from all over. We've got some that are adaptations of national programs. Um, here's one that uses Tai Chi. And here's a national program, a matter of balance, but it's this is from a, a particular aspect of it. So you can learn, here's another matter of, of balance from another community. So you can learn a lot about just what is out there that people are using in different places. And you can see that there are seven pages of results for this. So let's say that I look at this and I think, you know, that whole, the name matter of balance makes me think about balance and maybe that's a way to try to, um, to target these falls prevention programs. So now I'm gonna search for balance and see if there's anything specifically about that. I'm just trying to create, recreate the rabbit hole experience that we often indulge in. So, um, here is something really intriguing at the top of the list. It's called Bingo Size, Using Games to Improve Balance, Mobility, and ADLs, which I happen to know is Activities of Daily Living. And it's from Owensboro, Kentucky. So that's interesting to me. So I'm gonna click on it. And when I do, I get a description of the program. Now these are gonna vary because this is what people have submitted. So. In this case, we can see a description of the program, the goal or mission it has, and the results of a 10-week study. It's small, it only had an N of 18 people, but we can see what kinds of measures they use. They used a senior fitness test. They used some other tests. They had um, some rankings from the Administration on Aging's Evidence-Based Programs Review Committee that it met their minimal level criteria. So even if it was small, this seems kind of promising to me. And maybe I'll call this uh, Dr. Jason Crandall and see if they're still in this post at the uh, Western Kentucky University, because I've got a phone number and an email and a website. Maybe somebody else has taken over since this was done some years ago in January of 2011 is when it was implemented. So who knows who's still there or not, or whether the program has since expanded, but I have a way that I can find out more, which is one of the main reasons that I'm looking this up. I wanna see how well it might fit with the population I want to work with. And as always with DataShare, when you scroll down, there's more. There are more indicators to look at. So here are some um, indicators in other parts of data share that might be things that would give me some insights into what I could track for my own population. There's some reports um, of various um, scope and, and um, some of them are more recent than others. 
And then here's a list of related promising practices. So these are ones that I may or may not have known to look at, and there's even more of them. So there are tons of programs, and here they are just gathered um, in a more um, streamlined way. And so there might be things in the titles that make me think about something that's even more interesting or appealing to me. So this is just an example of starting in one place and ending up in another with a list that has some varying degrees of usefulness depending on what I'm trying to do. So let's see if anyone else wants to try this. First of all, has anyone already used the Promising Practices database? Okay. Eva, is there anything you wanted to add about the current status of it or how you, you found it useful? Um, well, I'll say that all the, um, the related components to the Promising Practices database are really helpful. I think what, you know, data share generally has population health data. And so we can see the indicators um, for our countywide population. Sometimes we can, you know, um, disaggregate by region and zip code and so really hone in. But it's really just telling us trends over time for the health and well-being of um, of the residents of the county. And so what I think that the promising practices brings to the table is really kind of like that solutions database. And so when we see the trend numbers in the data changing, adjusting, shifting, or staying the same, I think that a robust promising practices database can really solve for, okay, well, what are the components in our community that are supporting the changes in the data? So um, I think that that is um, kind of the promise of the database. And um, as it becomes more and more robust over time, um, we'll be able to, to continue to draw on it for some um, linking for those results. Um, and yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's do a little um, practice together. And I'll give you some parameters, but feel free to search on your own. If you already know something you want to search for and something you're already working on, go for it. But let's say, um, see what happens if you try to search for substance use prevention, an evidence-based program or practice, an EBP, and something that's applicable to women, if you wanted some suggestions. And does anybody need help getting to the right spot? Okay. We can do a test and see if we come up with the same things. Does anyone wanna share their screen with the group? Or just tell us what you found. I can. I don't Thank think you. I can. Oh, I can share my screen. We can do that real quick. Do we get to see that cute baby again? <laughs> I'm like, I also have the baby here. So if he makes noise, my apologies. No um, apology needed at all. Here we go. Don't cheer us all up. Here, Bubs, you want to say hi? This is what we found. We found the Baltimore Needle Exchange Program, Commit to Quit, It's Time, mm -hmm. and my our motivational interviewing and feedback for college drinkers. Is this the same? Did other people find the same thing? Yep. That looks pretty familiar. I love, this is my first time looking at this. I just came back from maternity leave this week and- Oh, welcome back. Is, thank you. This is like an amazing resource. <laughs> it's just so organized. There's a lot there and, um, but there's still, there's still things missing. So that's why we hope that 
we can get people to add more things to it. Thanks, Emma, for sharing that. Of course. Thank you. Anybody else? Is there anyone on the Spanish channel? Did anybody search for something other than women and substance use? He goes jealous that the baby got to make an appearance. So <laughs> don't be competitive. It's okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, we we'll move along then, but feel free to post um, questions in the chat because we'll still have a few minutes if, if you're stuck at all or you have any questions about how to use it after this, this very quick tour. Um, we're really hoping by sharing this with you today that we can help streamline the search for um, data that are any kind of data that are related to your programs, any strategies you're considering, if you're trying to come up with outcomes um, that may or may not be baked into something you're already doing, or maybe you're trying to expand and think about things more broadly, or maybe just thinking about how whatever it is that you're working on is connected to the core conditions and these broader community impacts and result areas. Could be a new program, an existing program, but many different functions, grant writing, evaluation, um, advocacy, budget planning, engaging other partners and community members. So there's just a lot here that can give you ideas and strengthen what you're doing or considering. If you're already doing something that you feel is ready to submit to the database, as I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to do that on your own, or um, you can, and you can use the form. Let me find that form for you and put pull it up again. And I'll share my screen. So if you click on that link, this is what it looks like. And if you do this directly, HCI will uh, take a look at it. They'll do some vetting on their end and see whether it, it fits their own definitions of a good idea, an effective or evidence-based practice, and whether or not they're going to um, categorize it as a local program that, again, may or may not be ranked as well. So in our role as core uh, co-facilitators and consultants, we can offer you assistance with doing this because we're trying to submit them in batches to make it easier for HCI to look at them um, instead of just one at a time, although you're very welcome to do that. If you want some help and want them grouped with some others from um, Santa Cruz County, let us know. We're going to put a link to a form um, in the chat. And we of course, cannot guarantee what HCI will decide about including them or not, or how they'll rank them, or even how quickly they'll review everything. But what we can what we can do is make sure that they get the information they need to to work with these um, submissions to the Promising Practice database to make it more robust, especially on a local level. And that's where Cindy can come in and help, um, and she can interview you, she can compile information that you send to her and put it into this format. Um, so just if, if that's the barrier of just um, organizing things to submit, we, we can help you get over that barrier. And you can also um, if, look at the guidelines that they've got here and the um, the ways that they define those different categories and what kinds of things they're looking at. I'll just scroll through the form here. But it's really, it's pretty straightforward. It's the kind of thing that you've just seen um, listed there, a description, something about the goal or mission of the program, if there is a website for it, um, whether it's an adaptation of another program or one that's available elsewhere as a curriculum or something, you could put that in there. If you've got results to share already, that's another thing you can talk about. And then all the things that make somebody else able to find it the same way we just searched. So primary target audience, any keywords, 
the keywords piece, as you can see, is really critical, but is just different people might do that in different ways. So that's why um, it might be also helpful to have some standardization there. So any questions about that? Or anything else? Okay, I'll stop my screen share so we can see each other better. And I see Giselle has listed the guidelines and the ranking methodology. And Nicole's put that form in the chat. So please feel free to review any of those and let us know. And the Google form is just a, a brief form just to get, get uh, so we can get a sense of who all is interested and how many programs you think you want to submit. And then, so once you submit that, um, then most likely Cindy will be the one to follow up you to get a sense of, you know, what the programs are, how much data you already have uh, collected and kind of work out logistics with you around uh, what it will take to put into the format that HCI needs. And I just want to emphasize, even though this is the core institute, um, and you'll see a question on there about whether or not you're a core grantee, this is for everybody. So we want to encourage, whether you're funded through core or not, um, currently, we would really welcome um, your submissions to the database. So that's why we're offering to help. I just wanted to jump in if I could and just say, you know, I, I welcome hearing from you and uh, I'll be reaching out to you as well. Um, if, you know, if you're interested in, in um, submitting your information to the Promising Practices database, um, it's just, uh, it'll all be a way to um, bring more attention to your program and also, you know, and be highlighted for other um, organizations in Santa Cruz. So uh, I wanted to encourage you to do it and uh, I'm happy to work with you. And even if you have information in different places, I'm really happy to help with, you know, organizing it. And just, if you want to just send me pieces and I'll just put it together and, and send it off with um, the, the, all the other, uh, the other information from Santa Cruz. Yes. Cindy will make you feel a lot more organized. <laughs> thanks, Cindy. And thanks for the nice comments in the chat. And, and feel free to share this with others um, in your organization and networks who may not be on the call today. And we're also repeating this on Friday, uh, this exact same presentation. And, you know, if other people have questions or want to attend that, and we are recording it. So there, you can't get away. <laughs> we'll track you down. Promising practices, database information. And it might be worth mentioning too um, that once a program has been added to the Promising Practices database, um, I, our sense is that the the research team at Healthy Communities Institute they're not necessarily going through on a really regular basis to review them and, and decide what's updated or outdated. And so, if there's a change in your program, like if it gets uploaded to the database, if there's a significant change in your program or you're no longer offering it or something changes, um, really we'd want you to be able to reach out directly to HCI or or, th or to Eva at DataShare to say, hey, how do I, <laughs> how do I get this information uh, updated so that it reflects uh, what's currently happening? Because um, that's, that's not necessarily something either that we'll be monitoring on a regular basis. There was something on there I just saw that was an archived um, program. So I'm assuming that's what that means, that it's just not current information anymore, but they still want to offer it. Okay, any other wanna... questions? Yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And what we'll share at this point is just what else is coming up in June? 
terms of our core institute events, as Nicole said, we're repeating this session on Friday. It's the exact same content. So if you attended this one, you don't need to attend again. Uh, and then we'll have what we're calling some peer learning circles happening in June. Uh, and because it's the end of the fiscal year, we know it's a busy time. But as you know, the fiscal year ends and you know, kind of the reporting season begins, we wanted to offer some informal kind of office hours style sessions where anybody who's interested in these particular topics can come together, share a question, ask a question, and that we can all, whoever attends, share ideas, tips, resources, uh, so we're really kind of coaching and learning together. It's not going to be a structured training or a workshop that Nicole and I present, but more creating that opportunity uh, to learn together. So we have picked some th some specific themes just to give a little bit of a focus for each peer learning circle. Um, but again, we're asking participants, if you sign up, come ready with your questions, come ready with ideas. Uh, so on the 13th from 12 to 1, we're going to focus on humble bragging about your grant successes. How do, you, how do you showcase and really emphasize the things that have gone well in your programs uh, as you're reporting to your funders? Um, on the 16th, from 10.30 to 11.30, we're going to focus on communicating challenges honestly and constructively. So how do you convey to funders that maybe you didn't meet your outcomes or meet your targets in terms of <clears throat> number of people to serve? Um, but there are still ways that you can communicate that in an honest and constructive way and, and share or convey what you have learned from that and how you'll continue work to continuously improve. Uh, after the 16th, then we're going to uh, do another workshop. This is part of our um, series that we've been doing with DataShare with Eva and uh, Eric from Health Services Agency, where each uh, session we focus on a specific core condition for health and well-being. So we've made it all the way around that circle <laughs> graphic of all the core conditions. We're finishing up this workshop series by focusing on stable, affordable housing and shelter. So we'll look at what uh, data is available on data share related to stable, affordable housing and shelter and have some discussion about what does that data tell us? Where are there still some gaps? How do we use that data for planning and uh, uh, filling uh, service needs? Then we'll finish up with two more peer learning circles on June 26th and 29th. 26th, we're going to focus on data visualization tips. So how do you really make your data come alive and be understood by different audiences? Uh, and then our last peer learning circle this month will focus on how do you communicate your results beyond your funder reports? How do you make that information accessible, uh, relatable, interesting to other audiences as well? So we hope you will sign up for one or more of those events. Uh, Giselle has put the link to the events page of the core website in the chat. So if you click on that, you can see all of these events, each with their own registration link, or you can scan the QR code that's showing on the slide. And then finally, we would appreciate your feedback about today's session. And so when you leave this Zoom meeting, you'll see a Survey Monkey survey appear in a web browser. Uh, so you can either fill it out that way, or you can go directly to the surveys using the links that Gisela just put in the chat. Or again, you can scan one of the QR codes to answer the survey in either English or Spanish. But we Really appreciate it when um, participants share their feedback. It helps us understand what worked well and what we could do better and um, continuously improve these Court Institute events. And especially this one, since we're repeating it right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to say thank you for coming and hope to see you again at a, at a core event.